essentially my bumper sticker is to make every high school a community college. Let's give every single student the opportunity to get a meaningful post-secondary two-year credential while they're in high school. Tell us about what you're seeing on this uh, response to coronavirus, both in Texas and nationally. This is exposing incredible unevenness and inequity in our systems that were there the day before the lockdowns happened, but are really acutely surfaced now in terms of broadband or device ubiquity, uh, teacher preparedness and all of that. One of the things I, I would advise policymakers, especially uh, federal policymakers to do is let's get some guidance on uh, the best of technology. What are we learning? Let's get some guidance on how to uh, re-enter with students who have had uh, slippage and loss. Let's get some guidance on mental health issues. So I think uh, the federal government and state governments can be a forum for conven convening that best talent that we have to bring to bear to the problem. What are you seeing that's worrying you? One of the things I'm really worried about, Andy, and you will not be surprised to hear that, is we cannot get out of the habit of measuring students and their progress and where they are. Totally get and completely support the fact that, no, we can't have high stakes accountability assessment uh, this, this year, this spring. But if I ruled the world, two things would happen. One, we would start school much earlier. We'd make uh, the, the 2021 20, school year, you know, 200 days, 210 days, not 180 or 170 or 165 like we have around this country. And we would administer those standardized assessments in the early fall and the first six weeks or so, so we can really find out where our students are, how much learning loss has there been. Are you worried that this is just gonna lay the groundwork for further uh, rollback absolutely. on accountability, either state level, national? You're already starting to see, well, maybe we can't do a you know second year of assessment and you know, just here we go again. So hawks like me are gonna be pounding the table and saying, hell no. You're doing some work on healthcare as part of Project 2036. Um, you're also doing some work on education. Is there a nexus there in terms of these entry level credentials to help people even in high school, things like CNAs or EMTs? And has this crisis pointed to some opportunities to expand access to those roles that were in demand even before the coronavirus, just with an aging population and so forth? Absolutely. I mean, think of the public health core that we're going to need. One of the things about 2036 that we're proud of is that we are looking across the whole that. We're connecting the dots that healthy people are educated people and vice versa. So when the president announced there was going to be a task force on reopening the country and bringing people together to think about what that was, was going to look like, Secretary DeVos wasn't even included in that. And yet schools, in addition to their role just in education, they're the largest employer in a lot of communities too. So they're just instrumental in any decision about reopening any, any economy. What would your advice to Secretary DeVos be in this crisis? You know, if I said the other day, if I were Betsy DeVos, I would go to Baltimore on the day that they're handing out food to the, the uh, school population. If that's what they're doing there, they are doing that here. I'd also, as I've been saying, you know, ha she, she has a great platform to convene experts around the challenges before us. I mean, you know this from your, from your uh, DC service, White House service, there's nobody you can't get on the phone and there's nobody in this situation that doesn't want to be helpful. So I think there are opportunities. As I say, in the absence of that, we'll figure it out somehow. But, um, you know, as a convener, as a profferer of guidance and expertise, I think they can add a lot of value. And I think they can add a lot of value around research and figuring out what's working and what isn't. So you are advising the president during and through 9-11, um, which is a crisis in its own right. What were some lessons learned from 2001 that um, leaders should apply to 2021 at, through and after Corona? I was at the White House as the head of domestic policy and was dealing in uh, transportation and airline issues, uh, rebuilding New York, uh, those sorts of things. And you know what struck me then, and obviously we've seen clips of this. I mean, President Bush uh, really brought the country together, and I think people need to see their federal leaders uniting, building confidence. Uh, we passed this gigantic education reform bill that had been stuck in the Congress for many, many years, 
by year round, and it was signed uh, in the early part of, of the, the following year. And in, in Washington, we, it, it took about a year to enact No Child Left Behind, a bill that affected and still affects every community and every school in this country because there are still many core elements, annual assessment, disaggregated data, uh, a focus on reading and, and various things like that that are, are still the law of the land today. Margaret, give us your best case and your worst case scenario for what comes out of this in a couple of years and where we are as a country. I'll start with the best case scenario. I, I think uh, it, it's a wake up call where we say, listen, we're going to do whatever it takes to close the achievement gap and serve all people better. And we're going to jump over our, our, uh, our hidebound traditions in, in some ways to do that. We're going to make technology ubiquitous. We're going to put our best people uh, in the most challenging places to do the hardest work. We're going to uh, put higher ed capacity in our high schools because that's where they need it. Uh, so we're going to challenge our assumptions and we're going to do a much better job of using the, the infrastructure and the platforms we have to better serve all of our students. And we're going to hold ourselves accountable for doing that and learn and research along the way. My worst case scenario, I guess, is the opposite of that. And that is that uh, people will uh, awake from this coma, will get a vaccine, uh, the gaps and, and inequities that are being exposed now will be worse than ever. The hardest uh, uh, hits will be taken by those most vulnerable and the beat will go on. And um, that will be uh, regrettable, criminal, and it will, will serve Americans very poorly, all of us, as we go forward. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye.